Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. So I will dive into transcription and translation in much more detail in a separate video, but here we're just going to introduce the idea of protein synthesis. So let's start with the genes. So notice that you have a lot of DNA here packed into your chromosomes. Most of it is non-coding. Only 2% only of our DNA is actually coding for functional products. That's going to be your genes. So genes are segments of DNA that code for a functional product, which is usually a protein. So the other non-coding DNA, uh, I'm definitely not going to, I don't like to call it junk DNA. Some people do. We just don't know what a lot of it does, but we are learning that non-coding DNA is very, very important. So that's a gene, a segment of DNA, a sequence of DNA that codes for a functional product. Now we have to express those genes though and that's what's going to take us to transcription and translation. So here uh, let's talk about the terminology. That's the main reason I want to do a separate video here is to talk about the terminology. If you get confused by which is which, think about the term. So transcription. I used to work with a, you know, a team of medical transcriptionists when I was still in practice and I, this is a long time ago. I would talk in a little tape recorder that had those little cassette tapes. So whatever I, whatever I needed in my notes would be in an audio format. I would give someone a bag full of these little cassettes at the end of the, end of the week. The following week I'd get an envelope full of typed out um, notes. So transcription, you're not changing the language. Whatever I said was going to stay in that language, but you're changing the form. So transcription is the conversion of DNA to RNA, but you're still speaking the same language. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, so the nucleic acid language. RNA, ribonucleic acid, nucleic acid, same language. So you're not changing the language, you're changing the form. So that's, that's going to be transcription. Think about that. Same language, different form, just like a medical transcriptionist. Translation, now you're talking about translators. I used to be a designated civil surgeon. I, I, did, I worked doing a lot of immigration status exams, so I worked with plenty of, of patients that didn't speak English. Now, I, I knew some Spanish, but um, we usually used a translator. So a translator is going to take my message and change the language. So transcription changes the format from DNA to RNA. Translation, you're converting RNA to protein. So RNA speaks the nucleic acid language. Protein speaks the amino acid language. So translation. Transcription, same language, different format. Translation, same message, different language. So here we see transcription and translation. So transcription, converting DNA to RNA. So you're going to take one of these strands of DNA, which is you know double-stranded, made of A, C, G, and T, and you're going to convert it to RNA, which is single-stranded, made of A, C, G, and U. So that's going to be the process of transcription that we'll cover later. Translation, you take this single strand of RNA and you translate it into a protein made Made of individual amino acids. So AUG means methionine. CCG means proline. So you're translating from the nucleic acid language to the amino acid language. So we'll cover all the details later. Um, why is this so important? Why do we have a two-step process? It's because your DNA needs to stay in the nucleus where it's protected. The job of the nucleus is to house and protect your DNA. So by making a copy, you're allowing the message to leave the nucleus without the DNA having to leave the nucleus. My favorite example is a recipe book. If I had a family heirloom passed down generation to generation, just like our DNA, if I had a family heirloom cookbook and you wanted to borrow a recipe, now, I'm old, so it used to be, I would say, you can't have my cookbook. It's not leaving my kitchen, but you can come and you can get a recipe card and you can, and you can take a recipe and you can leave the kitchen with that message. Well, now you take a picture with your phone, right? So DNA is protected in the nucleus, but the message can be copied into RNA and it can go and leave the kitchen. Now, RNA is then going, so it keeps DNA safe, but RNA goes out and does all the work. RNA is now the recipe. The finished product, the cookies, the cake, whatever you're making, is the protein, the finished product. That's how you go from a blueprint to an individual message to a finished product. That's why it's a two-step process. You can protect DNA at the same time. All right, lastly, uh, just how the, how the things occur differently in prokaryotes like bacteria and eukaryotes like us. So since we have a nucleus, transcription has to finish before translation can begin. Because translation finishes, the RNA gets cleaned up and processed, it leaves the nucleus to go find a ribosome. So translation, its transcription is all the way done before translation begins. With bacteria, they don't have a nucleus. So translation can actually start before transcription is even done. So it's faster, right? Bacteria... They can make proteins faster than us, but they also aren't protecting their DNA, so they have more mutations than us. So not one better than the other, just depends on depends on what you're looking at. All right, so that is the, the over, overview of protein synthesis. Now let's talk about transcription and translation a little more specifically. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.